Hello, my name's Howard and today I'm going to show you how to replace the hard drive in a Packard Bell Easy Note ME 69 BMP. The reason you might find this video helpful is that it's extremely difficult to find any instructions on the disassembly of this particular laptop and neither the internal RAM or the uh, hard disks are easily accessible unlike a lot of laptops where you just have to remove a, a door with some screws. I am indebted to Anna's uh, video on replacing the RAM on this uh, machine because without her instructions uh, it would have been totally impossible as you will uh, see. So I suggest you may like to watch her video first and then I'm going to go over some of the points uh, she mentioned and um, the um, reason that I particularly wanted to replace the hard disk on this machine was uh, simply I thought uh, the SSD might improve its performance which in fact it dramatically did so I was well pleased with the end result. The first thing to do is uh, to remove the power supply but before you do this uh, it's advisable to uh, get rid of any uh, static charge you might have, uh, wash in cold water, touch the tap and um, you uh, shouldn't then have uh, any electrostatic uh, discharge on you. Uh, the next thing is to uh, remove the battery pack which I already have done. Um, that's using the two release uh, buttons there and uh, the battery pack should uh, simply slide out. Uh, press and hold the uh, power button for about 10-15 um, seconds. Um, I'm told that uh, in fact makes sure all the capacitors in uh, your equipment are totally discharged. Okay and uh, this is where we come to the very tricky bit which um, without knowing about it uh, you would not get any further in taking this machine to bits. Um, there are three small plastic clips which I will show you in a second and uh, they are located at the back of where the battery pack sits and they have to be removed before you can go any further. In uh, these are the three little plastic tags. If you look very carefully you will see that they have arms on them and a little tab and that tab goes in to hold the keyboard in place from beneath uh, its position. Uh, the idea is that you must release each of these arms very carefully and then the uh, tag will come out uh, quite easily. The trick is uh, to be very careful about this and not to let it spring out because it could then fly anywhere. The next uh, step is also a little tricky. Once you release the plastic clips, the keyboard in fact is just a push fit into its uh, socket as it were uh, but you have got to be able to get underneath the keyboard um, and the only way you can apparently do this is a thin screwdriver or a thin knife I guess very very carefully insert it in the middle of the back of the keyboard about here don't try to, to uh, operate on the front of the keyboard because there are some clips holding it in uh, underneath which I'll show you in a second so the keyboard has to be released from the back so I've actually cheated and done this already but the idea is that you uh, eventually can pull the keyboard far enough up that you're able to slide something underneath it and then slip it all the way round which will release the keyboard. These are the uh, three pegs which hold the bottom edge of the keyboard in place. One, two, three. Now um, be very careful once you've released the keyboard because it's still connected to the computer by a ribbon cable so you don't want to disturb that as you can see. Right, the next step is to 
remove five screws which are clearly marked and I'll uh, deal with them in order. So the first screw is this one here and it is in fact marked door M2 times 8. Um, that I believe is a 2 millimeter Phillips headed screw 8 millimeters long. The second screw is by a slot called door release and it is also marked uh, as door. Two screws. The remaining three are at the top here, here and here. So that's five in total. Once you have uh, released the five screws, you can then use the door release slot to push out the back panel at the corner. So simply use a screwdriver, push it in the door release slot and you will feel the back panel give as it is slightly removed from its fit. Once you have uh, pressed the door release at this corner you can then insert a piece of wood and free the whole panel up. It's actually a complete panel rather than a door. Um, and this simply again uh, is uh, a uh, friction fit into its uh, slot here. Now we've got to the um, insides. Um, this is the hard disk here and um, this is the memory uh, one card which um, Anna replaced on um, her video. Uh, quite a simple job when you've got to this stage it's just a question of unclipping two plastic clips at the sides and um, this uh, memory card will slot out. Now when I came to have a look at the um, hard disk I could not see any way of removing it and actually the original was a um, um, a hard disk drive, not a solid state drive. This actually looks a little bit more obvious. There's no screws in the holes here. Uh, my other disk looked um, vastly more complicated and I was um, wondering how it was going to come out without apparently um, any uh, screws being available to um, take it out. Well, after a lot of uh, fiddling around, I eventually found it's quite simple. Uh, from, from the back, which you can get to now under the keyboard, it is a simple push fit. It is a simple push fit in its slot, as you can see. So that's all there is to it. Um, carefully push it out of its slot and um, the uh, SSD that I'm now holding uh, is an exact replacement for the original um, uh, hard disk drive. It's a um, 500 uh, gigabyte um, crucial um, SSD. Uh, very pleased with it. Seems to work um, very well. And um, the whole uh, modification on this computer has uh, speeded um, it up by about um, a factor of two, at least, probably a little bit more than that. Um, so, uh, if this is, um, if you have one of these machines, you're finding it a little bit slow and long in the tooth, um, you can do the modification on the memory and um, uh, replace the um, hard, uh, the original hard disk drive with a solid state drive. Um, and I think it's well well worth it. Save you buying a new one. Make this good for another couple of years. Uh, when you um, remove the uh, hard disk, um, this uh, is the, um, the pin connector. Simply slides off. Um, no problem there. Uh, make sure you don't strain the ribbon cable either on this or the keyboard as I mentioned before. Um, that's about it. Um, when you replace uh, the uh, screws, make sure you don't t over tighten them there. Remember going into plastic and um, they just need to be tightened up to when you feel a bite and then a fraction of a turn more. But one other thing, when I was um, originally disconnecting the keyboard, I managed to flick off 
uh, a key. Uh, if you should do this, don't worry, it simply clicks back onto its base um, and um, there's basically nothing to worry about as long as you obviously put the right key back on the right uh, slot. Um, I bought uh, the uh, four gigabyte uh, RAM from uh, this company. Uh, it cost about uh, 56 pounds, a uh, German company, uh, and it was guaranteed uh, particularly for uh, the uh, ME69BMP um, model. Uh, it arrived in about three days, so that was no problem. In the case of the uh, solid state drive, uh, I purchased um, a crucial um, MX500 drive from uh, Micron and this cost uh, me about £115. Again, it arrived uh, in a couple of days uh, together with some uh, downloadable software to make the cloning of the original disk to the new uh, SSD a painless uh, procedure. It worked very well and I thoroughly recommend uh, their way of uh, proceeding. The practicalities of the cloning process are simply to plug your new disc into a USB cable uh, which you can uh, obtain from Crucial uh, cost about £9 and then uh, plug uh, the cable into your laptop. Um, having done that, um, the process is very simple and uh, the software will look after the fact um, that you may be cloning to a larger disk and adjust your partitions uh, without uh, you having to do anything. So, uh, as I said, the system works very well and uh, once you've completed the clone, this is the disk you replace back in your laptop. Once you've installed your new SSD, you can download a piece of software from Crucial uh, called Storage Executive. This is a very useful piece of software which um, provides some condition monitoring on your uh, new SSD disk. Um, it uh, has a number of options. Um, there's some fairly basic ones such as um, storage used, uh, um, size of your uh, memory cache and uh, temperature the disk is running at and uh, you then also have um, the uh, monitoring um, software called SMART which stands for self uh, monitoring and reporting technology and uh, using this option you are presented with uh, probably about 20 or 30 parameters all involving uh, the various operations of your new disk. So, for example, uh, read-write errors, uh, the temperature it's running at, maximum temperature, power cycles, a whole lot of very useful information, uh, which um, gives you a good indication of um, how your disk is performing and whether it's uh, deteriorating. Now, an SSD should be treated as a long-term consumable item as they do deteriorate over time. And obviously using uh, this software you can keep a jolly good eye on how things are going. Uh, in addition, there's a couple of other things they provide. One that, that I have used called Momentum Cache, which um, just allows a, a more efficiency in the disk operation. Um, and um, a... Uh, option called over provisioning uh, which also um, provides for a better operation of the disk. Um, I couldn't use this simply because my partition um, setup uh, uh, got in the way and I wasn't prepared to change it. Uh, lastly um, remember that you do not need to defragment a solid state drive. Uh, the reason being that it works entirely differently to the old mechanical drive and defragmenting it is pointless. However, you can defragment the registry as this is only involving a small portion of the disk being read and written to. Well, that's that. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. This uh, video is really just to give you a little bit of extra help, um, save you um, not being able to do what uh, you wanted to do, which I certainly wouldn't have
been able to do, as I said, without um, looking at uh, the original video by Anna. See you again sometime.